successful entrepreneur Elon Musk is embarking on a new ambitious project. He wants to make advertising in space a reality. Joining me live now is astrophysicist and cosmologist Brad Tucker. Brad, love to talk, great to talk to you again. I love this story. <laughs> Can you explain to me just how SpaceX is going to send a billboard into space? Yeah, and look, it, you won't be seeing your favourite soft drink or beer sign, you know, from space on the ground. Now, what they're doing is they're sending what's called a CubeSat. These are miniaturized satellites, something that Australia is actually an expert in. They will send this with the Canadian firm into space. But what it actually will do is it will orientate itself. So kind of a, a digital screen will face away from the Earth. Now, the reason they're doing that is uh, what will happen is when someone pays to have their logo or message or maybe even your face put on that screen essentially a selfie stick will take a photo of that message or whatever is displayed with the earth in the background so if you ever wanted a shot of something in space with a beautiful earth instead of having uh it you know an animation or using another image on the earth and then superimposing it you can kind of take it live so it's definitely a step in the way of advertising in space, which is a very interesting idea that is uh, starting to become a reality. Hard to believe it is becoming a reality. Look, NASA's new generation of spacesuits has been delayed this week. What can you tell me? Yeah, this has been in development for quite a few years to get uh, astronauts to the moon. So when they're, what they're talking about here is a new type of uh, suit, rather, that can be used for lunar exploration. So this is that it could be used to go down to the lunar surface, uh, back to the space station called the Gateway that will be in orbit around the moon, and obviously keep astronauts safe in the right environment. Now, they're trying to build a new one that is easier to use, lighter weight. One of the bigger biggest issues they have with spacesuits right now is uh, its maneuverability, essentially. Um, because it's so stiff, astronauts end up having lots of health problems and physical body problems. But astronauts actually have a high rate of shoulder reconstruction surgeries because that suit tears your shoulders. So they're trying to develop a new one that is safe and effective, but obviously easier to use, especially compared to what's been used in for the past few decades. Now, like lots of projects, this is multiple companies working together to design one suit. The Inspector General of NASA this week has said the project is way overdue uh, and the, the goal of meeting uh, the needs by 2024, which has been the, the goal of landing a human has been uh, on the moon, is now unlikely and that will slip into 2025, if not later. So another sign that, you know, our goals of getting back to the moon aren't as close as it is uh, and obviously trying to find better ways of making this and preventing this in the future. And Boeing Starliner is now on hold after two failed attempts last week. Yeah, look, again, this is a, another unfortunate uh, f blow to Boeing um, for their project. So a number of years ago, NASA invested in SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner is essentially a space taxi service, a way to get their astronauts up in a cheap, reliable, and reusable way. Now, both projects, SpaceX and Boeing, tested about 18 months ago. SpaceX passed and has now had three missions to space. Boeing encountered a lot of critical problems that spent the past 18 months fixing. Now, they brought it to the launch pad last week, and twice it was delayed. It was actually delayed three times, but that was because of an issue on the space station, not with them. But as they were essentially fueling up, they had some problems in the valves, the hoses of this craft, uh, and that shut them down for the first day. They tried again the second day. They shut them down again. They spent the past few days trying to diagnose it at the launch pad. That has not worked. So now they have, again, indefinitely postponed the test while they go back essentially to the lab and fixing it. And, you know, questions are really starting to be raised with Boeing in their space uh, aspect here because they already NASA already has something that is used SpaceX how long will they wait for this to get going or will they just essentially give up on the program Boeing won't but NASA's patience may not last too much longer and Brad just finally you have some exciting news you and your team have witnessed a full shockwave going through a star causing it to explode take me through it yeah, it's a really cool project uh, led by my uh, PhD student, Patrick Armstrong. So when a star explodes, it's exactly like a nuclear bomb and because they essentially are giant bombs. You get that bright flash, and then the shockwave travels through the star into space, causing the star to ignite. And what we've seen for the first time is not only that shockwave, that flash happen, 
but essentially going all the way through the star causing to ignite. So literally seeing the first moments a star explodes and really helping us to confirm exactly how stars explode, the exact process. And again, those minutes to hours, instead of talking about days, weeks, or months that a star explodes and really helping us understand how stars die and then eventually turn down the road into new stars. So really cool to see giant bombs in space that have harmed no one, but it's just a good celestial firework show for my friends and I. I always love your insights. That's right, physicist and cosmologist Brad Tucker. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Thanks.